James Craig has been charged with first-degree murder for poisoning his wife, Angela. Police have evidence that he ordered several kinds of poison and planned to kill his wife so he could be with his mistress. everybody welcome to the true crime squad i'm christy brower here with my sister co-host and partner in crime katie weaver hey katie hello hello how's it going oh it's going it's going it's going <laughs> well good. you might you may note we're not wearing matching shirts so look at that minds did not think alike this time we keep doing that accidentally <laughs> we we would have been but i um spilled spaghetti on mine and had to change oh well <laughs> darn oh here we are well <laughs> it's something i don't know we always catch flack either that we are matching and that's cool or that we are matching and that's dumb I, it doesn't matter whatever we do some people like it some people hate it there's <laughs> like we just do whatever we do because we're, there's no pleasing everybody that's what we have learned you know recently somebody told us that we should eat less cake and that and made I me want it. cakes so Walk i went off. <laughs> Oh, it made me want cake. So I went straight to the store and bought cake and I ate it. Well, that's there you how, go. <laughs> that's what I wanted to do. What? You know, being on YouTube for, well, more than three years now, um, you just get used to everything. We never get comments like this on the podcast. It's all yeah. YouTube. It's all YouTube. YouTube is the meanest place on the internet. Well, okay. Twitter is the meanest place on the internet, but YouTube oh, okay, is the yes. close <laughs> It's true. And yet wonderful too because mostly oh, yeah. we have wonderful people around here but boy the occasionally vast majority are wonderful ooh. but yeah occasionally uh... we can just do nothing right <laughs> mm -hmm. it's true mm -hmm. usually well, it's some keyboard warrior from his mama's basement probably in his dirty underwear tapping out all of his you know that's the only visual that i will allow myself to have when we get dumb when we get dumb <laughs> responses i'm like yeah oh it's 99 percent of the time it's men yeah. oh yeah it is it is. And it's always people who are not content creators, not Definitely. podcasters, you know, haven't put out, I don't know, about 700 true crime episodes in the last three years. No. I think we're good. I'm not but too worried. Speaking <laughs> of that, this is Look, our... If you tell me to eat less cake, I'm going to eat more cake. Just know that. Too. Just... Shut up. I don't, I don't yeah. listen to anybody else about but me about what I eat, so go to hell <laughs> with that. Um... <laughs> This is our Tuesday episode, and we've got some barn burners for you today. So let's mm -hmm. get started first. Katie, I know you have a missing person spotlight for us. I do. So this is an American couple from Florida, mm -hmm. and they were vacationing in Haiti, they went to Haiti to visit some ailing relatives and go to a community festival. And they do have a one-year-old, but I believe the one-year-old actually stayed in Florida. Uh, mm -hmm. They're both 33. Their names are Abigail Toussaint and Jean Dickens Toussaint. And they have been kidnapped. Oh, my God. In Haiti. Everybody's uh, worst nightmare. It is terrifying. Yeah. Oh. So they got to Haiti and they got on a bus with a cousin to travel to uh, the festival that they were headed to and to the uh, relatives that they were going to see. And apparently a local gang uh, hijacked the bus, demanded that all Americans get off the bus and their uh, escorts, whoever were with them, and took them. So apparently they asked for $6,000 for their release and the family actually did pay that. Then they did not release them. They upped the payment demand to $200,000 per person. Oh my now, God. Obviously this family oh. does not have that kind of money. I mean, um, who would really in reality? Very few of us. Sure. And so they, but also they have been, apparently they've been unable to get uh, proof of life. 
There's a cousin named Christy that has been the touch point. She says that they've been unable to get to, uh, proof of life. And, you know, they're, everyone is just extremely concerned. Uh, the U U.S., uh, the State Department is involved. They've been contacted. They said they are very aware of these two missing in Haiti. They said that they will work closely with authorities in Haiti to see if they can find this couple and get them back. Uh, mm. They also said that Haiti is currently listed as a do not travel state or, or do not travel country due to safety concerns like this. Uh, mm. But, you know, this family, they, they had family there. They were going to be mm -hmm. with family. And, I'm sure uh, they thought they'd be fine. I'm sure they did. Oh, so Especially sad. they had a cousin that picked him up at the airport, got on the bus with them. I mean, I'm sure, sure they thought they'd be completely fine to go, but they were not. So it is a very oh scary thing. So we definitely want to keep their family uh, high in our thoughts and really hope that uh, there is a pathway forward to getting them back and that they're okay. Yes, absolutely. And for their baby's sake, to oh, get them back home. Oh. And I just, that's so sad. What a horrendous loss for their family. Yeah. I really hope that they are found alive and safe. Well, how scary to be in another country. Oh my gosh, I you cannot know. imagine. And to know that they were kidnapped and taken at gunpoint. Yeah, like oh. there's no question what happened to them. Oh, that's mm. horrifying. It's very scary. So, yeah, I wanted to make you guys aware that that is happening. That's currently playing out uh, here in the U.S. So we'll just keep a really close eye on that. Yeah. And that was that happened, by the way, uh, on March 18th. Oh, boy. So it's been a hot minute. Yeah. It has. Yeah. yeah. So, Christy, Ooh. with that, I am going to kick the mic back over to you. I cannot wait to hear all about this uh, mess. Uh. Oh my gosh, you guys. Well, let's talk about James Craig. Uh -huh. James Craig has been charged with first degree murder for the poisoning death of his wife, Angela. This is a story coming out of Colorado. Uh, and <laughs> I read the... Um, the arrest affidavit, you know, the, the stuff they turn into the judge to say, hey, we want to arrest this guy. Right. It's 52 pages long, which they're usually 10-ish. Oh. They're usually yeah, not this long. I've Brian read a lot Kohlberger's of Kohlberger's was, I think, 12. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's very long. The yeah. main reason that it's long is because it is full of images of text messages. Ooh, because okay. I'll tell you what. One thing that James Craig is not is good at crime. He's very bad <laughs> at crime. There is Excellent. an absolute avalanche of evidence against him. But let me just give you the rundown, basically, of what happened. So initially, and we'll do some backtracking, but on March 15th of 2023, Angela Craig um, arrived at the hospital, um, University Hospital. This is in uh, Aurora, is it? Or it's it's Colorado. Anyway, mm -hmm. she had a severe he headache and was experiencing dizziness. Her brother uh, was with her. He brought her in and her husband, James, then met them there. Mm -hmm. At about two o'clock in the afternoon that day, Angela had a seizure and just rapidly declined medically. She was placed on life support in the intensive care unit. Mm -hmm. And um, they were unable to find any kind of um, explanation, but she went into a coma and, and died. Wow. So let me tell you about her husband, James. So James is a dentist and he has a business partner, Ryan. And so James and Angela are friends with Ryan and his wife, kind of. Mm -hmm. And Ryan had recently, in 2022, had bought James's practice because uh, the other thing James is real bad at is business. He was he had run yeah. his practice into the ground. They were close to bankruptcy, and so Ryan bought the practice and bailed him out, basically. Um. So. Well, on the day that uh, this all happened. 
some of the nurses were concerned and, and suspicious that Angela may have actually been the victim of poisoning. Oh. Well, Ryan showed up at the hospital when, and uh, asked to speak with police. And when he spoke with police, he told them that he and some of their co-workers in this uh, dental practice were aware that uh, James had ordered potassium cyanide to the office. Oh, wow. And Ryan was really concerned about it because there's no reason to have potassium cyanide in a dental practice. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the nurse, well, he told the nurse and then the nurse called the police and the police came. And then this is when the investigation happened. And yes, this is an Aurora. That's what I thought. Okay. So what had been happening is that this was not the first medical collapse that Angela had had. She had uh, gone to the ER on the 6th of March. They didn't know what was wrong with her. They sent her home. She went back on the 9th. They um, hospitalized her and she was in the hospital until the 14th of March. No clue what was wrong with her. They ran every test you can possibly imagine. And she just had really weird symptoms. She had a terrible headache. She was very nauseated. Her blood pressure would go really high and then really low. Her blood sugar would go really high and then it would drop back down. Like she just her and system her, was just it was circuiting very much. And oh, her vision would get really blurry and she was just miserable. She was exhausted and weak. And I mean, they have no idea what's wrong with her. They've tested her oh, for everything boy. they can think of. Well, after being in the hospital about five days, she gets a little better, kind of stabilizes. Mm -hmm. So they send her home on the 14th. Um, on the 15th, she came back, had a seizure, went into a coma, and they eventually had to turn off her ventilator because there was no brain activity. Oh. So let me outline <laughs> this insane timeline for you. Um, and we're going to get to a bunch of stuff as I do that, but I think that helps um, at the end of this um, report is basically, you know, a timeline of events. And it, it makes way more sense than anything um, else I could tell you. So they start looking into what he's been doing. And they search, the police search their house. They search the house where he's staying, which is a ward member. They're, they're Mormon. Uh -huh. um, he was the elders quorum president. Uh -huh. And they were very much, very typical uh, Mormon family. There were people bringing in food all the time and people sure. giving Angela blessings and all those things. Yeah. Police search the house where he and the kids are staying. There are six children. Some of them are adults, but several at home. Uh -huh. And his dental practice. Uh -huh. Well... The day before the cyanide showed up, one of his coworkers or one of his staff saw him at a computer just in one of their like treatment rooms after hours. And she thought it was weird because he has his own office with his computer. It's a lab uh -huh. he brings to and from work with him. She was like, why is he using that computer? Well, on that computer, he had created an email address, a Gmail address. It was created on the 27th of February. And then with that Gmail account in Chrome, he had done a bunch of searches like poison will kill people. Oh, my God. On an autopsy. How much arsenic does someone need to take to die? Stuff like that. Oh, for God's sake. And so what they found, um, besides the searches, is in the email account, there were order forms and, you know, like orders of various kinds of um, poison. So, uh -huh. well, it was the arsenic and I'm pretty sure and the autopsy is not back, but I think they're going to find that he used the arsenic to poison her starting on the 6th of March uh -huh. or somewhere. That's when she first got sick. Right. Up through the 14th. The, um, potassium cyanide arrived while she was in the hospital. And so, uh. like, Potassium cyanide was what actually killed her because apparently he hadn't given her enough arsenic to kill her. 
Right. What happened was that he would make her a protein shake in the morning quite a bit. And the, the belief is that, and they took all of the stuff out of their kitchen, mm-hmm. some baggies of white powder and, you know, all the protein shake stuff. But the thinking is that he poisoned her through her protein shakes. Mm-hmm. But he had also ordered oleandin, which is a poison made from oleander. Mm-hmm. It was on its way when she died. My God. And the FBI got a hold of the lab where he had ordered it and said, hey, you know, this guy was, you know, murdered his wife with poison. And so they stopped that shipment and got it back to where it went. Mm-hmm. But he, the arsenic he ordered as a specimen, because arsenic is a rock. Mm-hmm. He ordered it as a specimen from Amazon. Wow. And yeah, because it's it's just a rock. And basically it comes with this, yeah. you know this uh, caveat, like, hey, don't put this in your mouth. It'll kill you. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, and But then to get the potassium cyanide, he had to, he said that he was a craniofacial surgeon and that he was going to use the potassium cyanide to like coat some kind of metallurgy to coat his instruments in some kind of I don't know, some kind of experiment that he was doing to improve surgery. And if, Uh and that if it turned out good, this would be, um, you know, a breakthrough and it would get uh, published in journals and stuff. Oh, for Christ's sake. It's all bullshit. He's a dentist. Uh But they sent it to him. Sent it to him. Uh. They sent it to him. And then he made up a story like that with the Oleander Mm. too. Because you can only get stuff like that if you have a legitimate reason to get it and, you know, are a doctor or a researcher or something. Like, you can't just order stuff. Or arsenic, apparently you can, but, yeah, uh-huh. in, in some forms. Right. So they find all of this on this computer. And it just confirms everything that the, um, that the uh, office people had told him, had told them about uh-huh. it. But let me... T- the text messages, man, the text messages alone are enough to, it's unreal. But let me, I want to share a text message with you. This was, so what happens is he finds out that his business partner has ratted him out to the police saying, hey, I happen to know that you um, did this. And at this point, what he's saying, he first said, oh, that that, no one from my work knows what was in that package. I told him not to open it because he had. Uh But he told one person not to open it. Another person received it from FedEx and opened it because it's a it's a dental practice. Of course, they're going to open stuff. Right. Then the office manager is like, hey, oh, that's that's for Dr. Craig. Don't open that. He said it was personal and we, we weren't supposed to open it. Well, it was too late because they. Two different people had now seen that what it contained was potassium cyanide. But oh. They were afraid of getting, they weren't sure at that point what it was mm-hmm. for, that, you know, they were afraid that, you know, they were going to get in trouble. So they taped it back up and made it look like it had been <gasps> and gave it to him. So he didn't know that they knew. So he told the police and he told his business uh-huh. partner, that was a ring for Angela. It was a surprise for her. Nobody knows what's in that. I told you, I told the staff not to open it. Nobody opened it. <laughs> They're like, no, we did. And we know it was potassium cyanide. So then he says, My yeah, God. okay. I was embarrassed. I didn't want anybody to know this, but Angela asked me to order it. Oh, yes, of I course. Mean, this is all Angela's fault. It's all Angela's fault, don't you know? Angela had been suicidal, according to him. There's no evidence of that at all with anyone else who knew her. <sighs> Nobody thought that. That's where he decides to go. Yes. Good Lord. He's like, I, I didn't think she'd really do it. Yes, because people regularly yeah. kill themselves by poisoning themselves mm-hmm. with potassium cyanide. Give me a break. Sure, Craig. What sure. an idiot. Yeah. So, <laughs> the, so the day after all this goes down, he sends this text message. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's really long. But I just want to read part of it um, to you because this just tells you exactly who this guy is. Mm-hmm. Uh, good morning, Ryan. Thank you for taking my patient load today. I want to make an urgent plea to you. 
If we were ever friends, please do this favor for me. Please don't talk to anyone about what we talked about last <laughs> week. This was a conversation that they'd had about how they were, they were having marital problems. Well, they were always having marital problems because turns out James Craig is a serial philanderer. Uh -huh. He's also um, a gambler. He's constantly running them out of money. Um, also, five or six years ago, he this is what he says. Wait, so, wait, wait, wait. Hold on one second. Yeah. He's the elders quorum president? Yeah, yeah. And a serial uh -huh. cheater and a serial gambler. Yeah, yeah. What? Um, oh. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Also, five or six years ago, he drugged Angela, and he drugged her. He. This is what this is what's reported is that he was going to give himself a lethal injection of something and kill himself, and so he drugged her so that she wouldn't wake up and find him and stop him from doing it. What? So that's been a real sore spot in their marriage. And so how many times has he actually drugged Angela? Right. Yeah. At one point in their text messages back and forth while she is really sick, he says, given our past history, this must be really triggering for you. I want you to know I didn't drug you. Except that he had only this time it was poison. This guy is trash. Okay? Why would you say that? What yeah. the hell? Yeah. Well, there's gonna there's oh. more. There's more. But this, this so this text message. Please don't talk to anyone about what we talked about last night, which was the marital problems, and it was all blamed on her, of course, mm -hmm. because he's an asshole. Mm -hmm. um, including any law enforcement officers, you are under no obligation to answer their questions unless you are served a subpoena, and you will do more damage than good to my family by continuing to insert yourself into this. Angela ah! is gone and I am devastated. There's nothing that can bring her back. And I want desperately to tell you all of the details so that you can better understand what's gone on behind the scenes with her. There's so much you don't know that I wish you did. If you knew everything, this would make so much sense to you. But there's no use in telling you right now. Oh, James. Uh, yeah. Utter piece of shit. My God. Yeah. He also, in this text exchange, um, guilts the hell out of poor Ryan for what her, her, his, his children had to go through. They had to turn off mom, turn off the ventilator. And when they went back to the house, they were not allowed in the house because the police were there searching it. And that was apparently Ryan's fault, not James's fault, which is well, definitely, definitely James's fault. Nothing is James's fault. Right. Clearly, nothing's ever been James's fault, ever. No, um, James's life. Yeah. So then just the end of the message. And so I'm asking if there was ever any love in your heart for me, please don't make this any worse by talking to any officers or anyone else about this unless you are legally forced to. And whoever else on the team you think is going to be questioned, I would ask that you privately ask them to honor this request, too. Also, please do not respond to this text message until I text you again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the cops are going to take his phone. And this message is going to spontaneously combust in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Right. <laughs> and clearly Ryan God. turned it all over because there are screenshots in this yes. affidavit. And, and Ryan I mean, is not a complete and total dumbass, obviously. And Ryan says that, you know, he did not realize what a chaotic person James was until... He'd already bought his practice and that, you know, there's some stuff in that text message about how Ryan and the other staff talk behind James back all the time about him. And it's they're all like, what the hell is going on with this guy? You know, mm -hmm. a crazy. So can you imagine the probably nonstop stream of lies and gaslighting and manipulation oh, that yeah. has gone on in this office? So much. Mm. So much so. Um, one, and then there's all these text exchanges between James and Angela. And one that's highlighted is um, James saying, have you eaten anything? Angela saying, I had my protein shake and magnesium makes me weird. This is not hungry, as in she's not like she's not feeling well is what she's mm -hmm. responding to. And he says, are you nauseous? And she says, no, I feel drugged. And this is where he says, given our history, I know that must be triggering. Just for the record, I didn't drug you. 
I am super worried, though. You really looked pale before I left, like in your lips, even. So there are all these text messages back and forth with him. And a big share of them are literally while she is like laying at home really sick mm -hmm. or in the hospital because she was in the hospital from mm -hmm. March 9th to March 14th. Right. Right. And they are so overboard. I love you. I'm so sorry. How are you? Are you okay today? What's going on? Well, I'm doing this with the kids. Blah, 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 blah. The whole friggin' time he knows she is laying in the hospital dying mm -hmm. because of him. Yeah. And on a couple of occasions, he says, oh, I'm glad you got back to me. When I didn't hear from you for a long time, I got scared that maybe you were dead. Oh, my God. Why would you say that to your spouse? Right. Unless you knew that you were trying to make them dead. And I don't know about this family, obviously, but in mine, if I was in the hospital for six days, terribly ill, there's only one place my husband would be. Right. And it I'm sure as hell wouldn't be anywhere else than at the hospital. He was at work. He was home taking care of the kids. He would come up in the evenings to visit her. But she was primarily alone, alone. while she was in the hospital until right before she got out of the hospital, her brother and sister-in-law came to visit because her family was really, really concerned about her. Yeah. And I would imagine that they had some concerns that he had something to do with this because they knew she had nearly left him so many times in this marriage and had so many reasons to. Yeah. Uh, he gave her many reasons to, but the, the text messages for the five, six days she was in the hospital and him just pretending like he's the loving doting husband mm -hmm. uh, there. It's absolutely chilling. Uh -huh. To read them, to know the whole time that he knows exactly what's wrong with her. Yep. You know, he he knows exactly what they could do to help her. She ends up on oxygen. And it's she just has, truly hoping they don't figure it out. Yeah, just truly hoping they don't figure it out. How are you feeling? Have you heard from the doctor? What's the sure. doctor saying? You know? So... When the police get all of this, they get that computer from the room where he, you know, had set up this Gmail account. Well, <laughs> because not a smart criminal, he had left that account signed in. So there were two email accounts for him signed into on that computer. And one of them was this new one called James Waffles at gmail.com. And it should have been called James Murderer at gmail.com mm -hmm. because this is where all the orders and the searches are. He searches things like, oh, he's watching YouTube videos, top five undetectable poisons that show no signs of foul play, how to make poison, the top 10 deadliest plants that can kill you. Wait, wait, I need to know. Mm -hmm. Were there any jail calls between him and Lori Vallow? There were not, but boy, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? Just check. It. Now, wait a second. There were 3,000 jail calls to Chad Daybell. There were. But nobody seems to be able to know uh, what they said. So are we sure that's not <laughs> who this he guy phoning to? him up, finding out the deets? Yeah, no kidding. Well, there are a whole bunch of articles. Like his, he didn't clear any of the search history off that computer. It's all right there. For the police, they have absolutely everything against him, including all of the emails where he lies to this lab in order to get the potassium cyanide mm -hmm. and in trying to get the oleandin, too. Um, because, you know, apparently he's discovered that he, that the arsenic isn't, is making her really sick. But as soon as she's in the hospital and away from it for a while, she gets better. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Obviously, he was testing his plan, and I really think that probably the potassium cyanide is what killed her because it arrived while she was in the hospital. Yeah. You know what else old James was doing while his wife was in the hospital? Wait, 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 wait. Philandering yeah. for a hundred. <laughs> yes. Setting up plans for his orthodontist girlfriend to fly into the Denver airport. Oh, she my was actually God. actually supposed to fly in. The day after, I think, Angela died. Oh. Yeah. So did she, she didn't know that he, his wife had just died, right? She Yes, she did. She, she did? 
she did. She oh, knew he, she had just died. And she, but she was sort of backpedaling, like, oh, I really want to see you, but I don't really want to insert myself in the middle of mm-hmm. your family and her family. And she has no idea he killed her. Mm-hmm. But she, all, he, all she knows is that she, she's had this big health emergency and has been really, really sick and then dies. And he's still, like, pushing for her to come to visit because he is trash. Again, is her last name Fallow? Like, no. <laughs> the comparisons here are weird as hell. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So here are some of the conclusions that the police have come to. Um, throughout this investigation, your affiant, the this is the person writing the, the report, mm-hmm. has spoken to numerous people who have provided insight into Angela and James Craig's relationship. Not one person has suggested or even seen any source of su- suicidal ideations from Angela. James has provided those statements to the Department of Human Services employees because they came to talk to his kids, Mm -hmm. who, after hearing those statements, felt that James was trying to make a point to have some source of the cover-up story to prevent his incrimination. Mm -hmm. Um, He's told different stories to different people. Again, not a good criminal. Um, He told uh, the Department of Human Services that Angela was suicidal and that he had saved her many times by reviving her from who knows what, because he never called 911. There are no medical records to back that up. Well, sure, no, just, no. It was just a, was, I revive you. Yes. yes. He was, you know, the, the hero in that story. Of course. Um, James, James. Yeah. James can do no wrong. No. He's done clearly. it all right. And when his wife was suicidal, he was nice enough to order her a bunch of poisons to choose from. Yeah. Just because to be sweet. That would definitely be what you would do, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And then he told his employee, fellow employees that his marriage was failing and that he was in financial turmoil. Um, but he had also been communicating with this orthodontist um, a, about what appears from the emails to already be a sexual, um, in, sexually intimate relationship. He had gone to Las Vegas on some kind of trip um, not too long ago. And had blown two thousand dollars in gambling, and it sounds like he probably was meeting up with this chick there. Oh, for the love of God! And yeah, he was working on flying her to Denver while Angela was dying. So, in totality, this is what the police say: this investigation has proven that James has gone to great lengths to try and end his wife's life. On February twenty seventh, twenty twenty three, he created a new Gmail account. Uh, Jim and Waffles at gmail.com, which he only used in dental room number nine within his practice. So on that one computer, Mm -hmm. this email account was not found on his phone, his laptop, or on Angela's phone. While using this account, he researched multiple undetectable poisons and eventually purchased crystalline metalloid arsenic from Amazon. After buying this poison, he received an email uh, from the girlfriend about her intention to fly to Denver uh, for March 8th through the 10th. Now, I don't know for sure if she came during that time. Mm. Um, on March 4th, 2023, the arsenic was delivered uh, to his home. On March 4th, he received another email. Oh, yeah. He received another email from the girlfriend that her, she was rescheduling the trip for March 16th to the 20th and Angela died on the 15th. Um, Angela had been on a trip to visit family in Utah. She got home on the 5th of March. On the 6th of March, she ended up at the ER. Hold on. Um, Did he send her to Utah to tell her parents goodbye? Well, it sort of, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? But mm-hmm. I would imagine. Yeah. I don't know if he sent her, but she did go to Utah to see family. Um, so she went to the hospital on March 6th. She said her head felt funny, funny. She was dizzy and her eyes were not focusing. Uh, she also said she didn't feel right in her head and that her body was responding slowly. Mm -hmm. Um, these are just symptoms that are consistent with some of the symptoms from arsenic. Mm -hmm. So arsenic symptoms are vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea, dehydration, altered mental state or organ failure. So they didn't keep her that night. Mm -hmm. And that's when he ordered the oleandrin, uh-huh. uh, which is incredibly hard to get. It, he paid three hundred and thirty dollars for the oleandrin, uh-huh. but these that was intercepted by FedEx. Thank uh-huh. heavens! Um, but it was too late for her. Yeah. 
Um, on the 8th of March, um, according to flight plans from February 27th, someone came to Denver. I think it's the girlfriend. Mm. And then he ordered potassium cyanide on that same day. He tried to get it overnighted by the 9th. He was trying to do this sooner. Uh -huh. And there were delays in shipment because they had to verify his credentials. And it was a big thing, you know, because uh -huh. you don't just send out potassium cyanide to whatever jackass wants it. Although Wait, in this but case, they, they verified his did. credentials, but he wasn't what he said he was. No, but he was a dentist. And so uh -huh. somehow he got through with that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, let's see. Oh, so then he tells his employee that this package is coming and it's going to be to the office on March 13th. He said, it's personal. Please don't open it. Uh -huh. That's when it was accidentally opened. And two people actually saw what was in it. And that was potassium cyanide. We'll call them witness one and witness two. Witness one and witness two. Yeah, I don't know their names. They're blacked out. Uh -huh. um, but it, you know, was not for their practice. They'd never used potassium cyanide for anything. Right. They're probably like, what in the no right. everyone was like, what is this for? So that was on the 13th. Okay. So Angela had been in the hospital from the right. 9th. She's released on the 14th and goes home. On the 15th, she goes back to the hospital at 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. This time this was at a different hospital, University Hospital in Anschutz. I don't know what that is. Um, she had you know, a severe seizure and was intubated. Mm -hmm. She has suffered from a lack of oxygen and no pupil reaction and had intracranial, intracranial pressure. They put her in intensive care. She was on life support and did not regain brain activity. Um, they believe that he did administer the potassium cyanide through her shake. Mm -hmm. um, the CDC says that the symptoms of poisoning by potassium cyanide are um, high or low blood pressure, which was a thing she kept having, having loss of consciousness, lung injury, seizure, seizures, coma, and death, which is exactly what happened. Um, there were apparent, there were apparently other poisons that he had ordered and they haven't found them. Uh -huh. um, James has not spoken with the police about any of this. He's just keeps asking to get his phone back, apparently. Uh, <laughs> this was prior to him being arrested. Oh. Um, based on the totality of the investigation, James has shown the planning and intent to end his wife's life by searching for ways to kill someone undetected, providing her poisons that align with her hospitalized symptoms, and working on starting a life with his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. uh, this officer finds there is more than enough preliminary evidence sufficient to arrest James Craig with premeditated first-degree murder. Yeah. So this is what they turned into the judge. So he was arrested. Um, he has been charged and um, he is in jail and he has more court coming up on the 7th of April. And we will definitely be keeping an eye on this case. But my God, <sighs> it's not like it's going to take much to convict him. They've got it all right there. Mm -hmm. But the letter their bishop sent out. Their bishop sent out a letter. Maybe you were going to talk about this. If you were, I'll. No, go ahead. Their bishop sent out a letter to the people in their ward. That's their congregation. Uh, saying rightfully that the focus right now should be on the kids. Okay, I'll give you that. Mm -hmm. But then encourages people in the ward to not pass judgment. That's God's job. And not uh, to speak to the press or anybody that that's not their place to do. And if anyone has any questions or needs to speak to anyone about the uh, Craig's that they should be talking to, uh, to, to the state president, uh, not to these, uh, you know, the board members. Yeah. You know, like not the police, for example. Yeah. It was We've kind of a veil mm -hmm. before. Yep. Don't talk to the police. Don't talk to the press. And please don't judge poor James. Yep. Oh my God. A similar letter went out after Lori, well, after Chad was arrested mm -hmm. here. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of a well-known thing. Mormons circle the wagons. Real fast. Um, yep. And that's why we talk about these things, because that's wrong. Mm -hmm. That's wrong in every way. This man poisoned his wife, mm -hmm. took her from her six children and her family and all of the people who loved her and took her life away. Mm -hmm. and Those poor kids, the adult oh kids and the younger God. kids. My Imagine. God, what a horror. Yeah. And the whole time he's like taking care of them and doing all this stuff while mom's in the hospital so sick mm -hmm. because he poisoned her and put her there. And he's just pretending like he's being dad of the year the whole time. Yeah. It's so gross. Oh, it's so gross. Well, so poor Angela. Obviously, she's lived know. in domestic violence for quite a while. She has. And this did not ever deserve to. this nightmare. Yeah. And has he drugged her more times than that once? Can you imagine drugging your spouse? My God. Yeah. And what obviously, with his dental practice, with his knowledge... Uh, you know, with his education, he He's was got access. Has been able to p procure medication and poisons, and has, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. So horrifying yeah. beyond belief. Mm -hmm. So we will keep an eye on this one. We will let you know what happens. Um, you know, thankfully he's in jail now and can't hurt, harm anyone else. And apparently the girlfriend, her name did get released into the world. I'm not going to say it because this is not her fault. No. Um, she's basically in hiding, you know. Sure. Because her name has now been associated with this guy. And she didn't know he was killing his wife. I hope she didn't know. I don't I think so. I hope she didn't know. The police don't seem to think so. They seem to think that she just knew that he was going to leave her or that, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever lie he had told her. And she dodged a major poison bullet lady. Yeah. Yeah. Holy crap. So this is not the guy you want lady. No. If we find out you're writing him in jail, I swear to God. Right. Don't, don't do it. Her first name is Karen. Listen, Karen, <laughs> don't you goddamn do that. It is. I know not that. Karen. Do not do that. I won't say her last name, but mm -hmm. yeah. Do not write to this fool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to turn you over to Katie for some more WTF news. Mm. Well, I don't think I can top that nonsense, and I'm not even going to try. However, I do want to tell you about this sweet boy right here. This is a kid from Georgia. He has been tortured and humiliated at a party. More than one, apparently. His name is Trent Learcamp. And Trent had some kids who he thought were his friends. Now, Trent is 19. Uh, mm -hmm. He works around with some kids that are under 18. That's what we know. They're minors. Mm -hmm. And last Tuesday, those kids showed up at a hospital with Trent and kind of just dropped him off and took off. And Trent was immediately intubated and put in ICU in really bad shape. Yeah. Why? Because they had been torturing him at a party. God. They had tied him to a chair and forced him to ingest a whole bunch of shit, alcohol, mushrooms, other things. His they blood alcohol was like 0.4. Mm -hmm. Well, that yeah, they were pouring alcohol down his throat his throat apparently God. uh battery acid through a funnel God. they spray painted him including his face and eyes they taped him and they did it all on video and put it all over social media and then the crazy thing is this video popped up and this is also trent being sprayed down by a hose and I don't know if he's tied to that chair, but again, he's hunched over in a chair, mm -hmm. uh, just like the uh, party where he ended up in the ICU. This was a few days before that. Mm. So these friends of his have been hazing and torturing Trent, and they nearly killed him. 
So there's some things going on in the community because people are pissed off because these boys have not been arrested. There have been no charges. How can they not be? How they've done what they've not. done to him? Well, he may I'll never be you. okay. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, battery acid in a funnel. Yeah. Can you imagine how damaged his organs must be? Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. So, one of his friends from high school said that he thinks he said that he's been through a lot of hard things. He trans had a hard life and he said he's been living with depression and he thinks he was just looking for friends. And it seems like it, like he was letting them mess with him because he wanted, you know, why else would he have put up with this? Mm -hmm. He, there have been some rumors in the media that he was autistic. His friends are saying that's not true, uh, but that he was very depressed. Mm -hmm. Vulnerable kid. Yep. Uh, But the community has really had it. This is the same community, the same police department, uh, where Ahmaud Arbery lived. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? And Ahmaud Arbery's aunt, Thawanza Brooks, has organized a vigil. There was a vigil for him, uh, I I think today, actually, uh, or yesterday. And... They've had a big vigil uh, for him outside of the hospital. And in fact, his sister was at the window and they, you know, made some noise for her to make sure that he, hoping they could, he could hear them, that there were a big part of the community that, you know, showed out for him and wanted him to know that they love him and that they want him to be okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, But also to send a message to the police department that we aren't cool with this. And we want there to be action. And people have been calling the police department uh, right and left because this has gotten a lot of steam on the Internet. So the police department has basically been inundated with people asking for action. So in response to that, the police department today put out a statement. Because they're getting pressure. Mm -hmm. Uh. The Glynn County Police Department is continuing its investigation into an incident involving juveniles on St. Simons Island on March 21st. The Criminal Investigation Division and Georgia Bureau of Investigations have conducted interviews with the involved parties and obtained statements to further the investigation based on established facts. Individuals have been identified in video footage and further interviews are being conducted. Detectives have interviewed and taken a statement from Trent Lairkamp at the hospital. Working with the CBI, electronic evidence which has been recovered is being analyzed for information regarding the current incident as well as any previous incidents which had not been previously reported. Law enforcement has been actively investigating information brought forth by the public as it continues the investigation. GCPD has actively been in consultation with the Federal Bureau of Investigations, the CBI, the Glynn County Sheriff's Office, the Glynn County School Board, and the Glynn County District Attorney regarding this investigation. Citizens who may have more information are encouraged to come forward, yada, yada, yada. Basically, they're like, listen, we're investigating it. Settle down, people. Uh, He's like, are we we'll try- Okay, you had video of Ahmaud Arbery for months before you did anything. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And what locals are saying is that these are affluent kids. They're also saying that this incident happened at one of their homes where their parents uh, could have or should have known what was going on. Right. There's also a protest that's happening on Saturday outside of the business of that homeowner. The locals are not having it and good good on them because I'm afraid that if they hadn't gotten loud about this, about what happened to Trent, that this might have just gone unnoticed. And you have to wonder how many Trents have there been. That is exactly what happened with Ahmaud Arbery until somebody leaked the video. And when Mm -hmm. people in the community found out what that video showed, then every, you know, this is, Mm -hmm. it's the same thing, only fortunately working faster, Mm -hmm. but holy crap, how can these kids not be arrested? Mm -hmm. And yeah, were there adults home when this went on? 
Yep. Do adults know about this? Oh, that's the question. That's the wow. question. So oh. we are not uh, naming any of those families because, well, <laughs> we don't want to get sued. But that's... Those and those kids are minors, so we can't... And those kids are minors, so we are very careful we here to not name anyone, show anyone's anything. pictures besides Trent's. There is a GoFundMe for Trent to help cover his medical costs, though so hopefully uh, the Crime Victims Fund helps him with that, too. But he's I probably going to so. need some money to get back on his feet. Because who knows how uh, injured Trent's going to be from this. Mm -hmm. But that GoFundMe, uh, as of right now, is at $63,000. So, And we'll put a link Keep to it in the show notes. Keep putting money in there. The show notes. Yep. Keep putting money in there. And hopefully Trent can bounce back from this and find, mm, so. you know, find out that he has friends that aren't these friends, these fools. Yeah, aren't such abusers something better can happen for, for Trent. But this just really pissed me off and made me sick to think that uh, that uh, this was happening and men had been allowed to happen. And so anyway, luckily, thanks to the internet getting wild, it sounds to me like there probably will be some charges. There better be. There better be. But the community wow. is, is loud. And thank goodness for Ahmaud Arbery's aunt that is yes. organizing. Good on well, her. She knows what this feels like. Wow. Yep. Well, thank you for that. We'll certainly mm -hmm. keep you updated on all of these cases. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be back tomorrow with a, another episode and our case updates live stream. We do that on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Mountain on our YouTube channel and on our face in our Facebook group where we update all of the cases that we're covering. If there's anything new happening, we'll tell you about it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a live stream, uh, very active chat feel free to join us. We'd love to have you there. And if you can't join until after the fact, that's fine too. Uh -huh. We appreciate all of you. Thank you for listening and watching and following. Please be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment because that certainly helps us to grow as well. Uh -huh. And you know it, we are the True Crime Squad. Thanks for being here. Take care.